we'd had some episodes in our life before where people had close had taken their lives. And I seen what that did to the, the families. I didn't want that, so I was open to anything that would help me get back. Be able to forgive yourself and know that you're not Superman. You know, there's lots of avenues you can go to make it better. My name is Fred Kaufman, and I live in just outside of Lewiston, Idaho. I was born and raised here on a small farm. It wasn't too bad. I, I mean, I had a good childhood. We had a pretty long season. There's a few years there where we went 40, 50 days straight. So. But it was fun when you're young, you know, and exciting. When we went to Craigmont that, we stayed in a farmer's old house out there and, and ate in town. And so it was, it was exciting because we never ate meals in town when we was growing up. It just wasn't there. <laughs> We had a young adults group at the church here that got together and and the priest and so we'd we'd meet oh once a week or something and we'd either play volleyball or a baseball game or and uh, a friend of hers was tried to talk Dory and uh, my wife's name is Doris we call her Dory was a nurse she was a registered nurse and he tried to talk her into coming and. She, she declined for quite a while, and then she finally came one 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 day. I just seen her smiling face, and I thought I got to know that gal some more. <laughs> That's all it took. <laughs> I've always been a doer. I, I don't like to just sit around and talk about something. I like to get up and do it, you know, and get it done and move on. But so I didn't want to slow down. Let's put it that way. So. When my dad had passed away, and so my brother and I were administrators of his will and stuff, and so that kept me pretty busy taking care of mom and paying the bills and stuff. And so I didn't have a lot of time to worry about myself. <laughs> I just kept, you know, pushing myself and stuff, and uh, it uh, got to the to the point where I was just kind of going on reserve energy, I think, and stuff. And I think it, it just came on gradually, you know, a little bit. And I started noticing my legs were sore and the muscles. And, and uh, one of the things I can remember that happened was we'd put up this big building, but we didn't have it permanently anchored. It was temporarily anchored and we got a big windstorm and it started to lift and shift on me one afternoon and that just scared the heck out of me. I thought I was gonna lose it. And so then luckily my brother and I got it tied down and stuff, but I remember that after that, I was just kind of shaken and, and kind of got into that, how would you call it? A state of uh, uncertainty about things and everything. Well, we we went through all the normal, you know, checkups and stuff, and everything was normal as far as uh, physical. We really ruled out any uh, physical problems there, and so my doctor recommend that maybe we, we need to work on the, the emotional part and, and so he started me on some antidepressants and stuff. It went on for a while and it, it really didn't see a lot of improvement and so he recommended that I get some counseling and stuff and so we started. It helped. It took a long time to, to uh, really get the right person or something because I think I've seen four or five different people before I really started to uh, get a little glimpse of hope, you know, but I was to that point where if it'll help, 
let's do it, you know. But it was hard. I wouldn't have, I really wouldn't have been able to get through it without my wife's support. She was kind of my coach, I guess you say, and kept me going in the right direction. She just never give up on me, and the boys too. They were always there and willing to do anything they needed to help me out. My name is Jeff Kaufman. I'm a farmer here in the Lewiston Valley. Uh, I'm the fourth son in the lineup. I was 10 years late to the party, I like to say, or that I was born 10 years old because I was always trying to keep up with my brothers. Well, mom was making sure that dad did everything the doctor said he needed to be doing. So I didn't, I didn't worry about whether or not dad was taken care of. His mom, Dory, she, she had that taken care of. There, that was her one mission, was take care of Fred. Um, I'd hear from my brothers every once in a while, mainly Phil, about how, how things were going because Phil was working with dad at the time farming and he'd talk about how well we had a good day today and you know this is this is how it went and this is what seemed to help and I got to really see what was going on after I graduated and I came home and I was stepping into the shoes of my dad and taking on his farm and probably the hardest thing for me was when I was starting out being a farmer, I'd, it's very different when you're the one in charge, when you're not the one being told what to do. And coming into that without dad being able to answer questions like, like I knew he had the knowledge to, you know, he was so uncertain with himself. It was, that was hard. And there were times I was pretty upset that, Dad, you've done this for 40 years. Why can't you tell me how to do this? Well, the, the anxiety was, yeah, probably with the combination of depressed, being depressed was really bad. I think the anxiety was worse. Like, you just, yeah, you just almost like a panic attack, I guess you might call it that. I know it was even hard just to drive a tractor. Of course, most farmers are, are workers and hard workers and believe if you work hard, you're gonna get ahead, you know? And if you can't do it, I think that really weighs on you heavy. Most of my childhood, I didn't know that I was gonna be a farmer. I wanted to be a baseball player or, or a cowboy or an astronaut or whatever, but I, I got the opportunity after seventh grade to drive grain cart like I'd seen my brothers do in the past and I loved the challenge of it. I, there was always something that you could do better, but it was like that progression in yourself that never ends. And I got hooked on that. You kind of learn that how little your part is compared to God's part, <laughs> the rain and the right weather and everything. You can do everything right, but if you don't get the favorable weather, you know, you're not gonna have a good crop. And so you kind of learn that you gotta kind of trust in how you sell in yourself and in God and nature. <laughs> I wouldn't say that our production system has gotten any simpler in the last 50 years. There's even more variables and more systems that you need to understand and be able to troubleshoot. And the impact of something going wrong seems to cascade very quickly. Dr. Sherman was his name. When I first went to see him, he was about the first one that says, you know, we can help you, but it's, you gotta have patience and it's gonna take time. And that was the first time I thought, yeah, there is some hope for me. We just gotta hang in there. <laughs> and that, in that time, I, it really became a priority to me to make sure that I learned from what dad was going through 
and that, that I wouldn't fall into th those same hardships. And so it was, it was a very proactive time where I would see a counselor twice a month and evaluate why am I struggling mentally with this? Why is this getting me down? and what things do I need to change about how I see the world or how I see myself so that as I go through this life that is going to mirror very heavily my father that, that I don't come against that same hardship and whatnot. There's people that can help you if you're willing to, to uh, talk to them. And life is too short to go through it all, just toughing it out. <laughs> well, I think today there's more options than there ever has been through the internet. You can get remote counseling now, or you know, it's it, you don't actually have to go somewhere. You don't have to jump that hurdle of well, somebody's going to see my pickup at that office or whatnot. Uh, just uh, never give up. I think. The, there is an end to it. There is, if you're willing to have patience and, and work with it and work with the right people and stuff, you can, you can beat it. <laughs>